Lord, certainly we can praise the Lord. The psalmist said, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all the people. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear the Lord and fear him all the earth. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. Is there a worshiper in the house? Give him glory and give him praise. Three. 
praise him. I lift him up. I magnify and glorify his holy name. Why? Because he is worthy. Yes, he is. Glory, hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am so glad to be among the old Macedonian church family this morning. I just thank God just to even to be here, and I thank God that all of you are here. I thank God that we were able to come into his house this morning because everybody that wanted to come to church could not come this morning. But he blessed us to be able to come here, to get up and put on our garments and come into his house this morning. That is not just something that happens, Lord. The, Y'all, the Lord blesses us to be here. And once we get into his house, the least we could do is lift him up. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Our scripture is going to be done by Deacon uh, Johnny Myers. Invocation is Deacon Earl Quillen. So another selection by the music ministry. And then we'll have offertory prayer by Mose Myers and the young church by our pastor this morning. He's going to do that himself this morning. Um, after that, announcements and back to the musical ministry. And then we're going to hear from heaven. We're going to get fed, y'all. If you like me, you don't have time for breakfast before you come to church in the morning. But when I get into the house of the Lord, I expect to be fed. And if the pastor doesn't feed us this morning, I'm going to tell him about it because I'm hungry. I'm, I, I hunger and thirst after the word of God at all times. So when I come into his house, I expect to go home filled. God bless you. The scripture the scripture lesson this morning is coming from Luke, the sixth chapter, the forty sixth through the forty ninth verse. I'll be reading from the King James Virgin. Do I hear some pages turning? If not, and it reads, And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Whatsoever cometh to me, and heareth my saying, and doth, doth them, I will assure you whom he is, who he is like. He is like a man which buildeth a house and diggeth deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it for, from the foundation upon the rock. But he that heareth and does not is like a man that's without foundation built a house upon the earth against which the streams did beat vehemently and immediately it fell yeah. and the ruins of the house was great. Yeah. Thus I've read uh, Luke from Luke 46, 46 through the 49th verse. May God add the blessing to the reading of his word. Good morning, church family. It is indeed a blessing for us to be here. Let us pray. Father God, our maker and creator, the creator of the earth, moon, and stars, the most high God, he who has the power to destroy and to defend the spirit who gives us life. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy and protection. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for family, friends, and loved ones. 
Thank you for the roof over our heads. Thank you for the clothes on our backs. Thank you for the strength in our bodies. Thank you for the might in our hands. Thank you for the breath in our lungs. Thank you for the love in our hearts. Thank you for the living in our life. We exist because you are. We are here today because you have kept us all of our yesterdays. We are here in your presence giving you thanks because we realize what you brought us out of. Out of confusion and into clarity. Out of chaos and into peace. Out of ignorance and into understanding. Out of sorrow and into joy. Out of sin and into salvation. Out of bondage and into freedom. Thank you God for bringing us out. And we thank you, God, for bringing us in. Now, God, we ask for your spirit to meet us in this place. Have your way in this service. Have your way in our hearts and our minds. Have your way in our lives. Have your way today. But most importantly, Father, make sure that we get out of the way. Some people have come in here today looking to praise your holy and righteous name. Let's make sure, Father, that we don't get in the way. Some people are coming in here today to look for answers to problems that seem insurmountable. Let's make sure that we don't get in the way. Somebody got surgery coming up next week. And we ask Father God that you go with them. Somebody got a problem waiting on them on Monday. And we ask God that you help them to fix it. No matter what it is, God, we pray that you go with them. And we pray that everything that's done in these services today be useful for the edification of your kingdom and to bring these your people glory. Be with us and keep us, Father, for we can do nothing apart from you. These and other blessings we ask in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the church said amen, 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 amen. amen. and amen. amen. The Bible says in Ephesians 3 and 20, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we may ask or think. That is a promise. So can y'all help us welcome and encourage Brother Remus, who's coming to the mic for the first time.
young men. Yeah. I can imagine to see his granddaddy right now. Yeah. Wiping his eyes and heart. Yeah. But that's all right, June. Right up. I'm wiping my eyes for you. Yeah. Amen. Now, with, with, with singing like that and praising like that, we should mind giving. We should mind giving. What I was supposed to do? Amen. For our members, you already know that we, this is a given time for us. For our visitors, we have several different ways that you can give. We can give by Giblify. You can give by the tide box. You can deal by the mail. It may reach us here by this time next month. But whatever you do, just give. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for the visitation of the Holy Spirit. Hey, thank you, Lord, for this young man. We thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. We ask you to bless the offering as it comes. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. If you're happy and you know it, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an awesome God. What an awesome God. What an awesome God. What what an what an awesome God. I 
I, I can't think of a better word, so I'll just keep repeating it. What an awesome God. Hey, what an awesome God. The old saints would go in right about here and say, he's brought me a mighty long way. <laughs> if you knew how far the Lord had to reach to bring me back, you, you would praise him with me right about now. What an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do want to uh, certainly make you aware, if you're not aware, uh, if you have uh, teens that are 13 and older, teen church is happening upstairs in the Rev Reverend Lemia Myers Community Enrichment Center. And uh, the ushers will be more than happy uh, to escort your teenager to teen church. They have an awesome message that they'll be uh, dealing with on this morning, uh, as well as while we're having worship here uh, for our children 12 and under amen and and then and then anybody else that showed up <laughs> hallelujah jesus loves the little children all the children of the world red and yellow black and white all are precious in his sight come on down come on down come on down amen Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 How y'all like this shirt? You like that? You like that? Yeah. Oh, I got two thumbs up, y'all. Three th Oh, look at, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Y'all know anything about swag? I got a yes, and then I got a no. You know about swag? Can y'all help me teach them about swag? What, what can you help us with as we talk about swag? Um, wear your dress good. All right. Amen. Dress good. You, you got something for me, Miss Faith? Help me. When you, when you drippy. Say it. Say it one more time. When you drippy. Drippy. Drip, dripping with, 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 with the jewelry. What's up, man? All right. Good job. Good job. Anybody else want to help me with? You going to help me with swag? Your makeup. Your makeup. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, I want everybody up here to be dripping with swag. Right <laughs> dripping with swag, but... But I got a different kind of swag I want y'all to be dripping with. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking Is it on the screen? It is. Well, help me out. Help me out. What's on the screen? Amazing grace. Now, let's say it all together. Ready? Saved with amazing grace. We get saved not because we just want to get saved, but we need some help getting saved. Amen? We need Jesus. Can y'all say Jesus? Jesus? And we need Jesus to give us some grace. Can y'all say grace? Because we can't do it by ourselves. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I need to tell y'all the whole truth. We can't do anything without him. Can y'all help me say that? We can't do anything without him but with him we can walk with sway amen amen you may return to your seats i can't speak for you but i can speak for myself good morning and thank you for joining us here at the old macedonia missionary baptist church where we are developing daring disciples Let's take a look at your announcements for the week of April the 14th, 2024. Here is your wellness schedule for this week. On Monday, there will be no class. On Tuesday, we will have class at 10.30 a.m. Wednesday, there will be no class. And Thursday, there will be class at 10.30 a.m. 
we will resume our Bible study this week. We will have Bible study on Tuesday at 12 noon and on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Don't forget our church conference will be held this week, April 16th at 6 p.m. right here at the church. We will have our leadership retreat on April 26th at 6 p.m. and April 27th at 8.30 a.m. in the Lemire Myers Community Enrichment Center. Our guest facilitator will be Dr. Byron L. Bitt. The theme for the retreat is identifying and developing spiritual gifts. Our 154th church anniversary is next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Our guest preacher will be the Reverend Telly Gadsden, the District Superintendent of the South Carolina United Methodist Church. Please plan to attend and get here early. Here is Pastor Griffin's preaching schedule for April. Tomorrow, he'll be at the Mount Olive Baptist Church at 7 p.m. And on April the 28th, he will be at Bethlehem Baptist Church at 1.30 p.m. The Omicron Tau Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated and Crowning Lupus are hosting the inaugural Lord's Path to Success College Fair on April the 20th. Currently, we have almost 20 schools attending. We will also be having four breakout sessions happening throughout this time to help upcoming students and their families be better prepared for the journey to higher education. Students, especially freshmen, sophomores, and juniors in high school, and their parents are encouraged to attend. For more information, please contact Dr. Jamel Hodges at jamelhodges at gmail.com. And don't forget, Reverend Barbara Wills is looking for anyone to help with stitching. She will meet with anyone that is interested immediately after service on April the 28th. Here are our observances for April. April is National Minority Health Month. April is Stress Awareness Month. April is Autism Awareness Month. And April is also National Child Abuse Prevention Month. We'd like to welcome all of our visitors this morning. We're so glad that you're here. Please join our hospitality team immediately after service in room 104 of the Reverend Lemire Myers Community Enrichment Center. Thank you for joining us here at the Old Macedonian Missionary Baptist Church. Please take heed to all of our announcements. If you need a reminder about how good God is, let me let Coach tell you how good he is. And I just want you to know that the God I serve, the God I serve, when he closes a door, he opens up a door that is, that's given you unimaginable success. This is uncommon favor. Amen. I thought all the Gamecock fans would have leaped to their feet. <laughs> Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Uh, there are a couple of additional things that we do need to share with you uh, as we are approaching church anniversary. Amen. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me rewind and try that again. A couple more things I need to share with us as we're approaching our 154th church anniversary. Amen. Amen. I thought maybe somebody would get excited uh, that we are approaching our 154th church anniversary. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for it, and we certainly are looking forward to an excellent worship experience on next Sunday. We have a great preacher coming our way, and uh, we're looking forward to a great time in the Lord. As a part of our church anniversary celebration, we are also blessing those who are in need. Uh, we're partnering with the Needy Feedy uh, shut-ins program where we are feeding some 200 shut-in persons. <laughs> Amen. And uh, it requires uh, some sacrifice of early morning on next Sunday. So those of you who can and will 
uh, come and lend a helping hand. Uh, we need you here no later, uh, what is it, no later than 7? No later than 7 a.m. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, but we know that we will need some hands helping to get pack things packaged up and ready to go. Uh, so please, ma'am, please, sir, if you can, uh, we would certainly appreciate it. We also want to uh, emphasize our leadership retreat is for all persons who serve as a deacon, a trustee, a chairperson or president of a ministry or committee. Amen. We, we need you present and associate ministers. Amen. We need you present, but we also need you to respond to the email that went out. Uh, we need you to respond in two ways. First, we need you to take the spiritual gifts inventory. Go through the spiritual gifts inventory. Even if you did it last year in preparation for the leadership retreat, we want you to repeat it. We want you to go through and do it again this year uh, because uh, Dr. Byron Benton, our facilitator, will be addressing that particular uh, spiritual gifts inventory. There are different kinds out there, and he will be addressing that one that we sent the link to. The second uh, way we need you to respond, we need you to reply to the email a confirmation that you'll be here because we need to prepare accordingly for a correct number of attendees. Amen. There are copies that need to be made. Uh, there are food preps that need to take place. And we want to make sure that we uh, don't run out of anything. Amen. Because I ain't going to have y'all talking about now. Griffin No, he should have had more of this. Amen. 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 So please respond to the email in those two ways uh, so that we can appropriately prepare. Uh, we also want to uh, encourage us to return. We're back in session for Bible study. We're back in session for Bible study this week. Amen. And uh, we, we hope and pray uh, that you enjoyed the break, but there is work to be done. And so we're looking for you on Tuesday at 12 noon and Wednesday at 6. And uh, you don't have to be a member to attend. Amen. Amen. We open it up to any and everyone. Lastly, we do want to also express our great gratitude to everyone who helped make yesterday an excellent day for uh, the Women's Baptist E&M Convention Annual Rainbow Tea. Uh, we, we had all hands on deck on yesterday. We had deacons, we had trustees, we had AV ministry, we had music ministry, and others uh, who, who didn't even identify what ministry they were with, but they came in and they helped. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you for a tremendous job. You exceeded, you exceeded expectations. Amen. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> we are grateful and we are glad. After the music ministry will have blessed us, Whatever I forgot is forgotten. Uh, I just hope you'll catch up with it later. Amen. We'll, we'll have the music ministry, and then we'll come with a word from our sponsor.
the preacher to come and bring the word, everybody would stand. And I feel awkward when I do that now, but we are not just standing for the preacher to come and preach. We are standing for the word that our Lord is sending through him to preach. And it shows that we are ready to receive the word. So I'm going to ask if everybody would just stand as our pastor comes this morning and brings the word. To God be the glory. Would you look with me in the gospel of Luke that was read a few moments ago while you're still standing. Luke chapter number 6, verse 46. Luke 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Three words. Discipleship requires lordship. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our God and our Father, it is again we gather in your name. It is again we bow humbly before your presence. We come with our cups empty. We ask you to fill us till we overflow. We come into this sanctuary hungry for the bread of life. And we ask you to feed us till we want no more. We enter into this sanctuary. We enter into this worship space. We enter into your presence. And Lord, we need to hear from heaven's network. Speak to us. Help me to rightly divide word of truth and by your Holy Spirit help me to preach this sermon with all the necessary affection and power that someone will leave here different than whence they came may the words of my mouth the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you repeat after me? Discipleship requires lordship. Herman Hess accentuates in his short novel entitled The Journey to the East, that real leadership, and I add to this, real discipleship has more to do with service than status. Amen. Jesus points this message out clearly when the mother of the sons of Zebedee seeks favor from the Lord. She wants her two sons to be seated, one on the right and one on the left of Jesus when he comes into his kingdom. Yet I need to emphasize today that having a title, having a position without coupling it with a servant's heart, a servant's mind, and servanthood is empty service. I need, I, need, I need to emphasize that if we're going to really be his disciples, if we're going to really embody servanthood, if we're really going to become daring disciples, we must have a willingness to serve the Lord with gladness. Those who call Jesus, Lord, demonstrate his lordship over their lives. I need to say that again because some people seem to believe that all they have to do is show up on Sunday. 
plopped down in a pew, pay what they call their dues, sing a song, uh, pray a prayer, hear a sermon, and go on about their business. But I came by to let somebody know that those who call Jesus Lord uh, demonstrate that lordship is happening in and over and through their lives. To say that Jesus is Lord over one's life communicates uh, that such a person has willingly submitted to the lordship of Jesus. For Jesus to become Lord over one's life, disciples decidedly and willingly adhere to a definition that I need to make plain on today. Because a lot of folk, a lot of folk come to church and especially when they get opportunity to grab the mic, want to say he's Lord over my life. Uh, the meaning of Lord is that the person is under the general authority of another. It, it, it means that one is subject to, one is subject to the ownership, uh, uh, under the ownership of another. The, there is another who is over the person, who has authority, who has ownership, who gives direction, and who leads that person's life. We who know Christ belong to God because God has paid uh, the ultimate price for us. As a matter of fact, if you studied the Bible closely, you will discover that God not only owns us because he created us, but God secondly owns us because Jesus paid by his blood for us. I wish I had a witness right there who understands that we've been bought with a precious price. I'm certain, I'm certain you've heard folks say it more times than we can count. Jesus is Lord over my life. Uh, uh, some folk change it around with a different variation, but it still uh, is communicating uh, uh, something that we need to make sure that we understand. In our discussions and dialogue as we uh, have been diving deeply into the Bible study lessons, we learned at the center of being a disciple is emptying ourselves. We, we, we got to empty self. Put self on the shelf. Put self in the back and allow Christ to be the center of our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to empty ourselves. And one of the first goals of discipleship is making Jesus Lord and Master. I, I stopped by on assignment today. To help somebody understand that we can't just give lip service to this lordship. In fact, in fact, my brothers and my sisters, we discovered that we need to embody Luke 9, 23. If any man come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, I knew you could help me right there and follow me. That's what Jesus is saying to us, my brothers and my sisters. We ought not just give lip service to this lordship because we need to be sure that we unpack and understand what it means to say Jesus is Lord over my life. As I began, uh, uh, Reverend Dyson, I began to dig around this text and dig around the meaning of this phrase. Uh, and I came away with an appreciation for the fact that this word Lord uh, literally communicates that one is possessed and owned by God. Yeah. I, I need to say that for somebody who thinks that, that he or she is 
her own or his own purse. Uh, because this, this American this American rugged individualism has seeped its way into the spiritual language and folk think they can do stuff without God. But I came to tell somebody that, 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 that we, have, we are owned by God because he's purchased us twice. He, he purchased us in ownership and creation, and he purchased us with the precious blood of Jesus. When, when, when we claim that he's Lord, we're also saying he has authority over us. Such a statement should not just roll off our lips lightly. When we use the term Lord, it, it, it's, it's connecting us to Jesus. And the implication is that you are submitted to the so sovereignty, authority, and rulership of Jesus. To the extent that, that I don't make decisions unless I consult Amen. with the owner. I, I, don't, I don't take trips. I don't go places. I don't do things unless I talk it over with the Lord. And get direction and get answers because my whole lifestyle is supposed to be led by the Lord. I, I, yeah, Jesus is Lord over my life. That means uh, that every step, he's guiding me. That, that when I do what I do, it's because I want to glorify the name of the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, a disciple, it, the word disciple is so thrown around with, 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 without understanding uh, all that it entails. It, it's, it's, it's so much that it's taken me two years to get here. Y'all miss me. I'm trying to get my shout on right here because two years flew by and I didn't even wa know what happened. Two, two years went by, and, and here we are in April, two years later. Let me just throw this in while I'm in the neighborhood. I'm so glad to be here. A disciple, a disciple is a student who adheres to and travels with a teacher in a close educational relationship, especially when it comes to spiritual leaders. When we become disciples under the Lordship of Jesus, we begin a lifelong process of learning and growing in grace and knowledge of Jesus. Uh, Jackie Hill Perry illustrates this well when she describes a moment in her life when she knew that the Lord had transformed her mind. She tells the story of the presence of the Holy Ghost with her while she's on her job in Wendy's. She, she's in Wendy's, y'all, working as a cashier, and she says, in the past, I've had opportunity to pocket $20 here and $20 there, and they never missed it. But this time, she had the opportunity to do it again, and she said she had to pause. And, and she wondered, what would God say? Since he's watching me now. And she said that's when the bell went off in her head and, and, and the light came on in her spirit that the Holy Ghost was with her. Because the Holy Ghost was keeping her from doing something she's gotten away with before. But now that Jesus is Lord over her life. I don't walk like I used to walk. I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't do what I used to do because he's Lord <laughs> over my life. I got to get out of here, but can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, that those who call Jesus Lord engage in knowing Jesus. In the text, he says, he says, why do you call me Lord? 
No, knowing Jesus goes beyond knowing his name. H hanging around the church long enough and attending enough worship service and, and we will learn his name. But, but knowing Jesus' name does not indicate that one truly knows Jesus. In those lyrics that we love so well, in that hymn, we learn real quick, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses. Yes, he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, I belong to him and he belongs to me because he's Lord over my life. Those lyrics point out that the one who calls him Lord has intimate knowledge of Jesus. Such a one has, has watched this, an intimate relationship with Jesus. Can, can I tell somebody today that just because you courted doesn't mean you married? And it's too many folk, it's too many folk courting Jesus and won't become committed to Jesus. And just like you won't commit to that significant other, you keep trying to get the benefits from Jesus without the commitment that is required. Don't. Don't, don't just know his name, get to know him. And knowing Jesus requires some effort because you, you, can't, you can't pour knowledge from one person's head into another person's head. The individual's got to put forth some effort to do some learning. And, 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 and in educational circles, they talk about this thing called active listening. It means you're not just sitting there looking like some folk do on Sunday morning. Every once in a while, to show that you are actively listening, you ought to respond to what's being said. And when you come to church, that kind of response is that every now and again, you ought to at least say amen. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Uh, he says three words in today's text. He says, and not do. That, that, that tells me, that tells me, Brassage, that tells me uh, that, that, that there ought to be some action to go with our uh, 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 talk. Because a whole lot of folk can talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. You let me tell it. Uh, uh, David Justice can't hit farther than I hit. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. You let me tell it that, 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 that Justin Fields is the best quarterback on the planet. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. But my brothers and my sisters, just because you say it, that doesn't make it true. You might say Jesus is Lord, but what are you doing actively listening to his word and putting his word into your life to show and demonstrate he is Lord. One who knows him, one who knows him well will allow the Lordship to cause us to put forth an effort to know him intimately well. I got to get out of here, but secondly and finally, I got to tell somebody, those who know him not only are engaged in learning about him, but we embody excellence in our action. I, I know, I know, I know some of us uh, crazy folk have this notion that we can strive for perfection. 
I, I know I'm, I'm among a small group of folks that believe that because I serve an excellent God, I'm supposed to give him excellent service. I, I know I'm among a small group of folk who understand that since God has been so excellent to me, that I, 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 I just got sense enough to say, God, even if my abilities don't match your excellence, I'm still going to give you my excellence in effort. Can I give you Nike's way? Nike says, just do it. You may not have all that you think you should have, but just do it. You may not know how to do everything, but you may not have enough money. You may not have enough hands. You may not have enough people, but go ahead and do your best because all he wants us to do is give faithful effort and give him our best. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Knowing Jesus reflects a pursuit of excellence. This pursuit of excellence includes actions that fortify one's faith to be able to stand when the storms of life show up. Can I tell somebody today, if you're not in a storm or coming out of a storm, I came to let you know, get yourself ready. Because a storm is on the horizon. You can't escape the fact that all of us have to go through some storms in life. But the best way to deal with your storm is to use some of today's language. You got to stand on the business. Ah, these young folk have taught me that standing on the business is that you got to take care of your business. You got to do what you must do in order to get through. And when the storms come your way, you got to make sure that you are on a firm foundation. When a house has been constructed with excellent materials and excellent technique, the house can stand when the winds of life start blowing. If the house has been well built, then when the winds come that way, the house may sway a little bit. The house may shake a little bit, but the house that's standing on a firm foundation will not give in to the wind and the storms. I'm going to my seat after I share with us that when the house is well built, when the house is well constructed, when the house is standing in a blizzard, the Lord will give the house the ability to hold on in the midst of the storm. Therein lies a lesson for us because we learned in Bible study. We got to memorize, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, but without me, you can do nothing. I like that vine language because a vine clings to an oak tree and in so doing finds protection in times of trial that preserves its life. When storms arise, the vine is on the side of the tree that's away from the storm and the tree will protect the vine from the wind if the vine 
is exposed to the side of the tree. The wind is blowing. The tree serves as a brace so that when the wind is blowing, it blows the vine closer to the oak tree. When the wind blows the vine closer to the oak tree, the vine takes on its own meaning and starts clinging a little closer to the oak tree. In the storms of life, God allows us to be in the fury of life storms and God will protect us by keeping the wind away. But every once in a while, God will let the storm beat against the vine. But it causes the vine, you and me, to draw a little closer and hug God a little closer. Is there anybody here today who's made him Lord over your life? And when the storm came, he protected you. Or when the storm came, he drew you closer. Is there anybody here holding on to God's unchanging hand? Shall ye yet? Shall ye yet? I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold on because he's Lord over my life. Somebody said he is Lord. He is Lord, and because of him, I'm going to walk with my swag because I've been saved with amazing grace. Shout yeah, shout yeah, yeah, yes. for joining us today at Old Macedonia Baptist Church. We believe giving is a natural response for believers of Jesus Christ. We receive God's love and grace, and out of an overflow of a grateful heart, we give. We have multiple ways you can give. You can mail or drop off your tithes and offerings to 200 Macedonia Road, North Augusta, South Carolina, 298 Six zero. You can give using the online giving feature on our website at www.oldmacedoniabc.org or you can download the Givelify app to your mobile device. Search for Old Macedonia Baptist Church in North Augusta, South Carolina. And don't forget to mark it as a favorite to whom much is given much is required. God bless. It's all that I see.